Hi friends, welcome to Painting for Wellness. I'm your Arts and Wellness Ambassador, Bethany Bennett. We are in the writing lab or writing studio today at Atlantic Center for the Arts. And we are going to go on a magical vacation to Kyoto, Japan. I have our reference picture here. And if you wanna download it and print it out, you can do that as well. We're not gonna break this particular picture up into quadrants today. We're gonna to go straight into the painting. So this is a kind of different approach than I usually take, but it's kind of more fun too. So I have a larger brush, probably about one inch, and then I have several different detail brushes so that I can make the trees. And for my palette, I'm just using a green, yellow, brown, red, and some white. We won't be needing that much white because we're going to leave the canvas white as, our, as the base. So I've always wanted to go to Japan and I'm in love with bamboo and this particular forest is called Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. So we're gonna go right in and we're gonna put a little bit of red, and if you wanna mix it with the yellow, you can put that on your paintbrush. And we're gonna act like our paintbrush is a, like a stamp. So, and I want you to focus on your breathing the entire time we're doing this project. So be in the moment, be present, and be aware of what's in front of you. And let's just focus on that. We can start, take a deep breath together. And now we're gonna confidently go in and make this fun painting. So, pretending like the paintbrush is a stamp, you're gonna start by making these leaves. So this requires just a very tiny bit of paint on the paintbrush. You don't want a lot of paint on the paintbrush. In fact, I kind of blot it a little bit. And if you like this orange and these yellows over here, you can add in whatever colors you want. So we're gonna go on this little vacation together. So once we start, this particular forest is called Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. So we're gonna go right in and we're gonna put a little bit of red and if you wanna mix it with the yellow, you can put that on your paintbrush and we're gonna act like our paintbrush is a, like a stamp. So, and I want you to focus on your breathing the entire time we're doing this project. So be in the moment, be present, and be aware of what's in front of you. And let's just focus on that. We can start, take a deep breath together. And now we're gonna confidently go in and make this fun painting. So, pretending like the paintbrush is a stamp, you're gonna start by making these leaves. So this requires just a very tiny bit of paint on the paintbrush. You don't want a lot of paint on the paintbrush. In fact, I kind of blot it a little bit. And if you like this orange and these yellows over here, you can add in whatever colors you want. So we're gonna go on this little vacation together. So once we start putting the trees in, it will make more sense. And then we can go back in and do more leaves afterwards. 
but this sets up the, a nice background for us. And I am excited to start traveling again. And when I do, Japan is on the top of my list. So you can take as many artistic liberties as you want. If you want to cover the entire background with this blotting technique, you can do that first. Or if you want to use different colors I really like this reference picture. It looks more complex um, than it is going to be because we're just going to be making a simple and fun version of this. But it has great one point perspective here and this beautiful horizon line. So it's a, it's a great composition to copy. Okay, and now we have our first step. So now we're gonna move on and we're gonna put some of these uh, browns and golds and yellows in down here. And you can clean off your brush if you want, um, but it should be pretty much dry already. So you might not have to clean it off with water. So I'm gonna lay this on kind of thick. And there's some really amazing um, gold acrylics. You can use different golds or gold flakes or anything to make this path if you wanna make it super magical. So another cool trick that I have to tell you about is that if you mix red and green together you'll get almost a brownish color, brownish gray. Because red and green are complementary colors, so if you see my palette, as I mix red and green together, they almost make a brownish gray. And we're gonna use that as our dark color coming up here. If you prefer to just use a dark brown, you can do that as well if you're not comfortable mixing your colors. Love how this path is built with the bamboo as well. So magical. And see how these are bending in towards them a little bit each on both sides. These are both coming out in this direction. So just take your brush and pull it in that direction and it'll give you these sweet little brush strokes. So we have the basic shapes here. We have our path.
really like this highlight down the center. So we're gonna go in with some yellow and pop that in. And depending on what effect you want, experiment with your brushes. See what different brush strokes you can get. Kind of textures you can build up on the canvas. So this painting is going to be done in several layers. We've got a couple of our basic shapes going so far. Maybe a little bit lighter. And then we can darken it up on the sides. But we want that sunlight to come and shine right down on this path. Okay, so we're gonna go back in and now we're gonna get some green on our brush and we're gonna turn the canvas around and we're gonna start popping in our trees. We're gonna wait for this to dry because we'll come back to it. So flip your canvas around, grab one of your smaller detail brushes. So I have this cool one that's got a pointed or a curved tip to it so that you can Hold it like this while you're painting. It's easier to not get your hand on the canvas. You can use even a toothpick or I've seen people use um, floss and dip that in paint and drag it across the canvas. There's a lot of different ways you can make um, different lines. You don't want them to be perfect either. A little tip is put just a little bit of water on the brush before you start trying to drag it across the canvas. So trees are never really straight lines. So that's what's fun about making trees is that artistically, you can't mess them up. So we're just going to repeat this as many times as we want. Keeping your brush with a little bit of water on it, which is the opposite of what I normally do. And generally, trees are larger at the bottom, right? And then they get smaller as they get to the top. So. Keep that in mind. This one is really in the foreground here and it's really standing out and it's more of a brown than a, a green or a red so we'll make sure we, we include him. He looks like he's been around a long time. It's 
So whenever you draw or paint something organic, it's important to make sure that there's variety in it because nature is full of variety. Each plant, just like every person, is unique. And that's another fun reason why I like to plant, paint trees and different plants. So if you wanted to really have some fun, you could use some watercolors and actually like create drips if you wanted to do it that way. And that would just require a lot of um, liquidity to your, your paint. Right now we're using acrylic, so I'm adding a little bit of water to my brush each time. So these trees here are closer to me, right? And these ones are further away. So as they get closer to me, they get bigger. And you can see more details in the bamboo as they get closer to you. And they have these beautiful horizontal stripes on them. And we can include those too. A cool technique to include those stripes would be to use the other end of your paintbrush and just incise into the canvas while the paint is still wet. So you could do that. See how that kind of looks? or you can go back in and paint it either way. And as I go further into the distance, I'm gonna switch up and get smaller with my paint brushes so that I can make increasingly smaller lines. Another thing that's important, I think, in making things look realistic or natural is um, creating overlapping. So especially when you're painting trees or plants, um, a lot of them overlap in nature, right? So that's how you can also create a lot of space in your paintings. Whether it's their branches or their stems or the leaves coming off of it. Gotta get some more red in here, some variety.
top 10 places you want to visit. Let's paint them. And I'm doing this for my health because I really need to travel. And I haven't been able to, so this is my little mental visual vacation. And I'm so glad you guys could join me. If you look at this and you look at this and you say, hmm, that doesn't look anything like it. That's perfectly fine because first of all, we're not done yet. And second of all, this has tons of layers of trees in it. If you look at all these trees, it's hard to point out just one because there's so many of them. So don't get overwhelmed by that. You guys decide how many trees go in this bamboo forest. Let's switch to a smaller brush and get some real small lines going in the back. So see this little tree right here. Ooh, this is fun to make really small lines with. I like this brush. Right, so if you want to just get very spontaneous, just start popping trees in there. We can go back in and put leaves in in a little bit, okay? If you want to add more. So this is the end of our trail. Right down here, and we're going to put some pretty little trees down here. And a reminder, we are painting upside down on our canvas right now. <laughs> if anyone's tuning in and a little confused at this current moment, don't be. You were right, we are painting upside down. So, hmm. And then I like this guy right here. We're going to pop him in last.
All right, so we're gonna flip it back around real fast. Take a look at our progress. So we've got a lot to do so far. We're gonna have to pop these back in and then we'll put in the railways, which is simple. And then we can go back in and do some more leaves on the top. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my big brush. And it looks like there's a couple of monks in the far end of the trail in this picture, which is really cool. So I'm just blending this yellow and this brown in to kind of make it look more like a path. And there's this we're gonna go over this again with a darker brown. So these also get smaller as they go into, as they recede into the background as well. And sometimes just painting a relaxing place is all it takes to relax. I could definitely sit down and meditate in this place for sure. So sometimes I like to make things a little more difficult for myself. And I could have just put a multitude of browns on my palette and that would have simplified things. But today I was like, nope, I'm just going to use complementary colors and I'm going to mix my own browns. And you know what? I'm pretty happy about it. It's like a little challenge. All right, so we could go in here and put these highlights on the tops of those and pop in this nice bamboo railway that they have going all the way down. We're gonna wait until that dries again so we can paint in layers. And I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of an orange and just put a couple more leaves around the top just to fill it in.
So obviously this is my version of Kyoto, Japan. And I'm excited to see what you guys' versions look like. And I could personally spend another hour or so on this painting, maybe two hours, maybe three hours, I don't know. The point is, is that you can work on this for as long as you want. I am glad that we got together to do this though. I know I'm feeling less tense and more calm. Now that we went on this mental retreat, I'm hoping that you're feeling the same way. And I can't wait to go somewhere else with you guys. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.